What a sad, sad um, story regarding Whitney Houston, right? So young, so talented, um, so legendary and iconic, and only 48 years old. Um, I was at home in New Jersey uh, when I heard the news, and I don't remember much else after that. Uh, I know I was not answering phone calls. I wasn't making phone calls. I wasn't, I, um, I turned off the TV. Um, I did not watch the Grammys. I did not watch the fashion police before the Grammys. Like, I did nothing. Um, I started a new book this weekend, so I started reading. And um, that was about it. I kind of shut down and, you know, went to my shell and, you know, thinking about Whitney. And um, what, well, some of the details of her death, and they're still unfolding. Um, we're hearing that she drowned. We're hearing that she was in the bathtub. We're hearing that she was at the Beverly Hills Hotel, TMZ. Today, as well as some other outlets, are reporting that the family was told now that Whitney didn't drown because there wasn't enough water in her lungs. The, I don't know how the newspapers are near where you are, but it's everywhere. And, you know, the news scroller on every single TV show. Um, they say she, she may have died from a combination of prescription drugs, including Xanax and a mixture of alcohol. You know, it's all speculation. And we won't know for four to eight weeks. Um, but Whitney's death... Um, Everybody's going to be talking about it today, tomorrow, next week, next month. Um, after I say what I say, I'm not talking about it anymore. Um, you'll have to turn on Entertainment Tonight, The View. They're hot topics. You know, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Um, I felt very close to Whitney, even though this is a woman that I've never met. Never met her. Never been in the same room with her except for one time in my life. In 1985, when her first album came out, and I was a radio personality at my radio station at college in Boston, Northeastern University. And this new singer with this great voice came to Constitution Hall, and um, that's the only time in our entire lives that Whitney and I have even ever been in the same room together. Ever. Um, I had a very long radio career, over 20 years. I interviewed Whitney once in 2003, and uh, many of you all recall that interview. Um, some of the things that Whitney and I have in common that um, bonded us, the love of our mother and father. Uh, Mr. Houston has since passed. Mrs. Houston and, you know, my mother around the same age, Whitney and I, same age. Um, and both plagues with um, the demon of substance abuse. It's been almost 15 years since I smoked last from a crack pipe. It's been almost 15 years since I waited on Jerome Avenue in the Bronx. for my drugs. Thank you. I'm not proud of the girl that I was, but without being that girl, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. So if it makes any sense to you, I have no regrets. There's one thing throughout it all, my connection with Whitney, is that I wished for us both to be really sober and really aware. And I knew I'd meet her one day, but I always pictured that time to be in our late 50s, 60s, with her being the, the, the number one spokesperson for Say No. I just, for some reason, thought that that's what she would do. <sighs> it's what I want to do. It's, it's, I just thought we would meet and we would hug and we'd be sober and older and... Mm. My heart goes out to Bobby Chris.
her daughter, who's 18. Um, and my heart goes out to her mother, Sissy. <sighs> my heart goes out to her cousin, Dionne Warwick, <sighs> and her auntie, Aretha Franklin. And if you ever watched this show in season one, you'll recall my Whitney fans. It was never because I ever thought that she would come to our show, because it's just not why I was doing it. Um, I was doing it because I was still hearing things regarding Whitney and in my own kooky, crazy, way, this was my way of showing love. <laughs> and the one time that we did have our encounter, she ended it. I said, I love you, Whitney. She said, I love you too, Wendy. <sighs> She's my Jersey girl. She was a woman like me, who's part of the subculture of our society, the addict. So today, <clears throat> on behalf of me and anybody that you might know who's going through a struggle with substance abuse, anybody, then I don't care whether it's heroin, coke, pills, booze, reach out to that person. I'm one of the lucky ones. Reach out to that person and call them out on it. Because even if they don't quit, once you call them out, it makes it harder for them to sneak around, get high. And I guess that's all I wanted to say. I know that, you know, again, the toxicology report is not in. I've never done this before on this show. But I'm telling you now that I don't have anything more to say regarding this particular case. Um, it's just sad. And it's just sad. I love you, Whitney. I would like to um, let you guys know that Holly's here today. And uh, she's going to be up here next. And her Whitney story is actually quite entertaining. <laughs> but first, as we go to the break, I would have a moment, I would like to have a moment of silence for my Jersey girl, Whitney Houston. <laughs> 